Hello everyone, this is Ben and Janko. Welcome to our QX Financial Podcast. Good morning, Ben. How are you doing? Good morning, Janko. I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Very, very good. Uh, well, I want to welcome you all to our very, very first QX Financial Podcast. We're really excited about this launch. We're excited what this podcast can mean for uh, people out there that are looking for high-quality financial information. We're very, very excited about this, this program and this uh, project that we're launching today. So the only thing that we always ask you guys is that make sure to subscribe, make sure to share this with your friends and family, everybody that you know. If you find the contents of this podcast valuable, please help us get the word out there. We're going to be telling you today about you know, why we're doing this, what is the point of the podcast, but we'll definitely need, uh, need your help. And also don't, for, don't, forget to, don't forget to turn on your notifications because that's how you're going to know that we have a new episode coming up. Uh, so, Ben, what are we going to be doing today? So, that's a great question, Jonko. Today, we're going to be introducing ourselves to our viewers. Mm-hmm. We're going to be talking about some of the topics that we're going to have coming up on future episodes, the formats of the different episodes, the types of guest speakers that we'll have on, and all that good stuff. Exactly. So, let's let's get some housekeeping things out of the way. Uh, we're going to be trying... We're going to be... We're committed to at least put a podcast out there once a week so we, got, we, we can keep in touch with you guys and bring information that is important to you. Your feedback is going to be crucial uh, for us to have a success, successful podcast. Uh, or our email you know, information, contact information is going to be uh, in the description or below if you're listening to this on YouTube. Uh, so make sure to let us know what topics do you care about in the financial world, what are you concerned about, what do you want to learn more about, let us know, because then that way we can bring topics and subject matters that are relevant to you, okay? So, with that being said, uh, why are we doing this? Why are we starting this podcast? After 10 years of, of us being in the business, talking with people, helping people actually achieve financial success and financial security, we have come to realize how much, how much of no education, if I can say it that way, uh, there is out there uh, 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 with the average person, with, with the general public. People, they just don't know, and if they do know, they know very little about finance. So our goal with, it, with this podcast is to put, is to put uh, all of our experience out there, everything that we've learned through the years about business, financial success, you know, financial management, put it out there for you guys to take advantage of uh, so you can start to take charge of your financial well-being. That's such, a, such an important part of our lives. It's a, it, it takes so much time of our lives to go out there and make money. And it's a shame that most people don't realize, you know, that they don't really become wealthy, right? They don't really become wealthy even though they have every means to do so because they just don't have the education. So that's really the, the, the biggest reason why we're doing this, this podcast. Absolutely. And just to tack on to that, you know, I'd say our overall goal is not only to educate and motivate and inspire people to take action, but I think really that last part about motivating people to take action, it's all well and good to have uh, financial education, to listen to some of the other shows and podcasts and uh, materials, seminars that you could go to. But ultimately, if you're not putting that information, that knowledge into action in a way that makes sense for you and the people in, that are important in your lives, then ultimately you're not going to achieve the level of success and, and be able to do the things that you'd like to do in life. Exactly. We've got to take action. We've got to be doers, right? Especially in this age of social media, all of us are consuming all this information. There's great information out there. There's also terrible information out there. But all of us have become these just these subject consumers of information, but we're not actually applying it. So we're going to be challenging you, challenge you guys uh, that when you hear something that is of relevance to you, 
that you believe you should be engaging, that you believe you should be doing, take action. And if we believe, we, if, and if you believe we can be of help for you to do that, then just let us know, and we'll be happy to to work with you in helping you take action on whatever it is. All right. The other thing that we want you guys to know is we want you to know a little bit about us. Okay. So why don't you tell us, Ben, about your background? You know, how do you get in the in the financial industry? Tell us more about yourself. Absolutely. I just had my 34th birthday a couple of weeks ago. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I grew up, was born and raised in Orange County, California. Spent a few years overseas, uh, predominantly living in the United Kingdom. Got to travel all around Europe, um, a few countries in Africa, Asia, Latin America. So really had uh, some really eye-opening experiences as far as that goes, living and working in other countries, um, seeing how people in those countries think about money and planning for the future, all that good stuff. Um, but I guess to go back in time a little bit, you know, I think the family that I grew up in would be fair to say was more or less a lower middle class uh, family. I think money was always a struggle for our, our family growing up. And I think that's a big piece of why I decided to get into this industry is that I think, you know, I'm re really grateful that my family, my parents are in a good situation. They're more or less retired at this point. Um, but they were able to do so in spite of, compared to their peers, making a moderate amount less income uh, than their peers, but were able to save up adequately for retirement and live a comfortable lifestyle because of the intentional decisions that they made over a period of, of about 40 years of their working life to put aside money every month to live within their means, to make a budget, to think and plan and save for the future. Exactly. Um, yeah. You know, I've met his parents and uh, not everybody behaves that way. You know, most Americans are not in their home for 30 years and pay it off and all that stuff. So uh, let, let me tell you guys a little bit about me. Uh, uh, born and raised in Mexico, came to the United States at age 18. I had the privilege to be able to come here and go to college and learn about a lot of the world that I didn't know about. Uh, and like most people, I was able to stay and pursue other opportunities. Uh, but what really got me into the financial industry uh, was the 2008 financial crisis, believe it or not. Uh, so I graduated in 2008 with a degree in political science and almost a double major in economics. Um, but, and I went out there to try to find a job right after the financial crisis. Uh, and it was crazy to me that uh, I was going to job fairs and unemployment was almost 15% in California at that point in time. And I wasn't going to get a job. You have hundreds of thousands of people were being laid off every single month. Uh, I guess at some point in 2009, we were losing $200,000 uh, jobs a quarter. It was crazy. You guys can go back and look it up. It was crazy times. Uh, but that, that actually created a question in my head. Because growing up in Mexico, there was a financial crisis every five, six years. So I was kind of used to it. But we never seen anything like that here in America. So that led led me to ask a lot of questions. Uh, and obviously, we can have the macroeconomics argument as to what happened with the you know, mortgage-backed securities and all that good stuff. But the microeconomic question wasn't really being answered as to how I, as an individual, can protect myself from this happening to me again, from losing my home, from being on the streets because I lost my job, from living paycheck to paycheck. Those questions were not answered because even though we were able, able, obviously, we can see that right now, even though we were able to rescue the economy, we were not able to rescue the people. A lot of people, their lives will never look the same after what happened in 2008. So that was a, a burning question in me, and that kind of led to a surge and eventually led me into the role of the financial advisor. So... Obviously, a lot, of more, more, a lot of more things have happened in our lives in the last 10 years, but uh, we're going to leave it at that just so you guys know our background, where we come from, and we'll share more about our lives as the, as the time progresses. But that's really our mission. That's what we're here. We want to help people like you and others make sure they're making good decisions. So this, this podcast is going to have that kind of a content. And as I mentioned earlier, we're more than happy to deviate from subject matters 
based on what you guys want to hear about, okay? Uh, it's also fair to say, I need to say this, Ben and I are licensed individuals. We actually have a license uh, to do what we do, and that puts some constraints on the things that we can talk about publicly. So if you guys ask us questions that unfortunately we cannot give you an opinion on a public basis, we will be happy to give you an opinion on a private basis that we can do. So just be, be mindful that if you get an email from us saying, hey, we cannot really do a podcast about this particular topic, but I'll be happy to talk to you about it, that is the reason why. So this is going to come up, I'm sure, uh, a little times as we go through this process. And hence, at the uh, very end of the show, we'll have our uh, disclaimer, disclosure statements, and uh, be sure to uh, listen to those. And as always, uh, before taking any uh, particular decisions regarding your uh, finances, making any changes, making any investments, uh, it's important to consult a relevant licensed financial uh, professional or in, in the case of, say, estate planning or tax planning, uh, relevant uh, attorney or um, accounting prof professional who are appropriately licensed and accredited. Exactly. And this is the reason why I bring it up, because it's actually the topic of today, is where are people getting their financial education? Why do we have such terrible financial literacy in America? And I think one of the reasons is the financial media. You know, you have the CNBCs of the world, the Bloombergs, uh, there's a lot of channels in there, but they do not get paid for you to be financially successful. That's not how they make money. They make money by keeping you watching. It's entertainment. And I learned about this about two days ago. I didn't tell you about this, Ben. Uh, I learned this with, I went to an insurance company's meeting a couple days ago, and I learned about this. You may not know that the same producers of the Jim Cramer, Jim Cramer show, uh, uh, for, you, for you guys that haven't watched it, you can just Google it. Uh, it's a guy that goes out on TV and tells you what stocks to buy and what thing is good or bad. With all sorts of exciting sound effects and all that jazz. Exactly. The same producers uh, of that show are the producers of the Jerry Springer show. Oh, wow. That's crazy. All the, all the uh, I forget the name of the show, when they say, and you are the father. What's the name of that show? Yeah, it's a Jerry Springer show. Or, or, or Maury Povich. Maury or? Povich. Yeah. The same producers, same writers. Yeah. The reason why I bring this up is because that's, the point is that those kind of shows are entertainment. So a lot of these financial shows are nothing but entertainment. They're there to keep you watching. They're not there to educate you about what to do with your money. And full disclosure, quite frankly, a lot of those individuals... Um, are in a position to, to genuinely be able to provide that advice because, like we were saying earlier, uh, for many different aspects of this industry, it's required that you are licensed and registered with an appropriate uh, government body that you follow rules and regulations because if you're giving specific investment advice, you're not a uh, professional with knowledge and expertise in that specific area. Um, you can do a lot of harm to people, and there's back going, say, back as far as uh, the 1920s with the uh, crash of 29 and the regulations that came out subsequently that were designed to protect the consumer, same as back in the uh, 1980s and um, mm -hmm. uh, post-2008. Um, you know, these rules and laws are in place for a good reason uh, to discourage um, predatory behavior, dis discourage, you know, really gambling and market manipulation and um, discourage people from who have no business giving advice because they're not uh, professionals or experts. Exactly. So bottom line, guys, just remember to take with a grain of salt a lot of the quote-unquote professional advice that is out there in the Internet. And I'm, I'm going to try to not, to not name names. Uh, I don't want to get sued. <laughs> but there's a lot of people out there giving financial advice, selling millions of books, and may not be the right advice. Now, that is not to say we can, we're can we going to give you the right advice. In fact, I believe something as the right advice is very subjective. And the reason why that is is because every person is different. And, and, and this ties into our topic of today of financial literacy. Uh, just because you develop a financial plan, not everybody is going to have the same issues. Not everybody is going to have the same objectives. We're all going to have different 
different ways to look at to look at things, and therefore our plan has to be different. I always say that there is such a thing as economics, and there's also such a thing as psychonomics. That is to say, perception. The way we look at things, the way we believe things to be, have an influence on the financial decisions that we make. So we as advisors have to navigate uh, with, alongside with you those perceptions and help you either change them or enhance them or, 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 or try to modify them in such a way where you know, you're allowed to move in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So going back to financial literacy with, 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 with all these ideas in mind, the first step that, that we believe ne needs to be taken, and I'll let Ben talk more about this, but the first step before you engage into any kind of financial plan is you need to know where you're going. You need to know what your goals and objectives are. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. Um, so I think we're really with the nature of the work that we do is very much relationship-based, is very much a consultative approach. And in working with our clients, you know, I think a lot of people talk about uh, looking backwards. And of course, hindsight is twenty twenty. when talking about, okay, what's the quote unquote right uh, type of investment? What sort of right combination of products and services uh, that will provide protection against, you know, potential downside. So health insurance, life insurance, disability mm -hmm. insurance, combining that with appropriate investments, whether that's in uh, securities, real estate, or what have you, um, just by its very nature, you know, of course, we can look back and say, okay, if it would have done X, then this would have been the result. But just because a particular company or investment uh, did very well historically doesn't necessarily m mean that it's going to do well moving into the future, especially the further out you go, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what's more important to focus on is uh, general time-tested principles um, in a lot of the materials that we cover professionally for our continuing education um, and, and learning uh, talks about the prudent investor and what would the prudent investor do. And a lot of that has to do with making general principles such as uh, not spending everything that you earn, uh, putting a little bit of money aside for the future, having uh, appropriate protections in, in the case of a catastrophic event. And through these principles, more or less, we've developed sort of a prioritization of things. And typically, we start with the things that we can control, like um, risks. So um, having making sure you have appropriate health insurance, auto insurance, disability insurance, life insurance, because while we have no idea whether for an individual or even a group of people um, that their uh, specific instance is going to occur to to a particular individual, like a, a death in the family, a substantial disability, maybe a car crash, we do know, even though that probability may be quite small that the impact of that occurrence will be absolutely catastrophic and from our point of view it makes sense to put a little bit of money away uh, to make sure at least from a financial uh, point of view that that if such a catastrophic event occurs mm -hmm. that that individual and that family can continue going along moving forward uh, relatively secure in their overall financial picture and above and beyond that then start to focus on other things that we can control to some degree such as managing debt ma making sure that your individuals aren't incurring too much debt high interest debt um, and managing in that and you know keeping that at a low level or at the very least a, a um, manageable level <clears throat> and similar thing with, with taxes uh, consulting uh, tax professionals CPAs to make sure that the folks that we work with, whether they're business owners, whether they're simply employees, are taking all the deductions that they're entitled to. Um, and just doing those three simple things are uh, able to add a lot of value to folks simply as a result of their not necessarily understanding how these particular areas work and mm -hmm. helping them to make wiser decisions when it comes to these areas. And, of course, on top of that, they're saving and investing and all that good stuff. Now, in future podcasts, guys, we're going to break it down. So we're going to go area by area, explain to you what can you do in those areas, what are your options. 
But as I said at the beginning, it's really about your priorities. Everything that Ben talked about, it's important based on what do you want to do, right? Because, for example, if you're trying to protect a particular asset, well, the value of that asset is important. And also, you may, that asset may not be important to you. So why spend the money there? So everybody's going to be different. So the first thing we got to figure out is what do you want to do? What we call goals and objectives. What's your priorities? What's important? One of the things, the first thing we need to learn is that is, is what is called the, the principle of scarcity. It's an economics principle. And what it says is that all of us cannot have everything, all of us at the same time. It's impossible. All of us cannot live on the beach, right? All of us at the same time cannot own a Ferrari. There's not enough Ferraris out there for every person in the whole wild world. So because we cannot do that, we, ha we have to make choices. And in fact, economics, if you look at the basic definition of economics, is the science that you know, studies those choices, those trade-offs, right? We have to make choices. And so the first step is helping you making the right choices. Then after that, we got to go into, okay, how much money do we have, which is your budget, right? How are you allocating those dollars, which is what Ben was talking about? How are you prioritizing that money coming in to you? Then we definitely go into protection, risk management. That is crucial. And that has a lot of ways in which we can approach risk and, and, and risk management. We, we, we're going to have a whole, probably two whole podcasts just on risk management. That's such a great area. But I'm going to leave you with this uh, when it comes to risk management. Uh, a famous person said, there is more money in not losing money than in making money. I'll say it again. There is more money in not losing money than in making money. You see? Because a lot of us are already making money. I mean, if you guys, I mean, I'm 35, Ben is 34. Some of us have already made a million dollars in our lifetime. Yay. Right? But I don't feel like I have a million dollars. <laughs> it's because a lot of that money gets wasted, right? It just goes into all kinds of different things. But if I would have been a little smarter some years ago, maybe I will have a bigger share of the million dollars, right? So a lot of you guys that have been working 10, 15, 20 years already, if not more, I already made a lot of money. But a lot of that has been wasted, right? Because it's not sitting on your checking account or investment account. So risk management is such a cru crucial area. Ben talked about protection, uh, which is uh, a great area. One area that we focus on, and we're going to spend about a minute here, one area that we focus a lot, I should say, that a lot of people don't talk about in, in you know, financial books and the financial media is banking. Banking is crucial for uh, your, your wealth development. We're going to have a whole podcast just on banking and how banking works. But just remember that if you're not thinking about banking and you're focusing about investing, you might be focusing on the wrong thing right now. So we're going to be talking about that. And lastly, just savings and investing, your long term, right? What do you want to do long term, whether it's retirement or buying a second home or paying for college? All those are things that we help people achieve. We help people build their wealth to that, to that point. But there's a lot of variables involved. And Ben mentioned those taxes and risk and all these things. So we're going to, obviously, we cannot give you individual advice through this podcast. We're not legally allowed to do that. But we want to share with you the principles and the strategies that we use to accomplish those things. All right. So that's as far as financial literacy. The next series of ep episodes, probably around eight or nine episodes, I, I think, are going to be 100% focused on giving you those principles of what we call financial literacy. All right. And then from that point on, we're going to try to move also into financial products. Uh, we get a lot of questions about, hey, Janko, what do you think about company A, company B? What do you think about these products? Or Bitcoin or um, socially responsible investing. Exactly. Bitcoin. Right now, it's a thing, right? So it's in the news and the value is up, the value is down. What do you think about blockchain and all those things? So we're going to address those those things from, from a perspective of microeconomics, from a perspective of personal finance, finance, because most of you probably don't care, you know, the impact that Bitcoin is going to have for Facebook now that they're going to be launching their own, you know, uh, currency, currency, virtual, currency. virtual currency. 
you know, the fact that Zuckerberg is, is worth a couple more billion dollars doesn't help any of us. But what you may want to know is how is that going to affect me and it's going to affect my pocket? How is that going to affect my children's and the decisions that I need to make today? That's what we, wanna, we want this podcast to be also focused on, not just the big picture, but also how this affects you on your everyday life. All right. So I think that's going to be the breakdown, guys, for the next couple of episodes. Anything you want to add to that, Ben? No, I think, I think that was more or less the gist of it. Um, I think what are we planning for next week's podcast to jump on into some of the risk management stuff? or? Well, we w- I think the, ne- the, ne- the next po- podcast is going to be focused on how, how do we make decisions and how to figure out what your goals and objectives are. Okay, so... so Basic uh, planning stuff, a little bit of behavioral finance. Exactly, because because before we start talking about money and what to do, we need to know where we're going. And that may sound simple to a lot of you, but actually it's not. So we're going to have a whole conversation about how do I sit down and figure out what is it that I really want to do. We're going to have a whole conversation about that. Uh, but anyway, so... Uh, again, I want to thank you guys for uh, picking up our podcast and, and listening to it. Uh, we're going to have a, a, a podcast coming out every week. And, of course, hopefully things don't, don't get in the way, but that's our commitment to put up a new podcast out there every week. So make sure to subscribe. Make sure to give, you, give us some feedback via email. You can email us, and our addresses will be in the description of the podcast. And for those of you listening on YouTube, it's going to be on the description of the YouTube video. Uh, we also going to have a video channel coming up, so you, uh, uh, if you guys send us your email and get into our email list, we will be happy to let you know uh, when that's going to go live, and, and we're going to have actual videos with different topics, some similar, some different, and obviously the visuals helps a lot to explain some of these principles and some of those concepts. So we're going to be putting that out there in the next couple of weeks as well. Uh, so any, any, anything else you want to add, Ben, to that? No, I think, I think that's it. That's it? Very excited to have you guys, uh, you know, have you guys go with us in this journey. We're very excited about this podcast and what it can do for people. So, again, help us get the word out there. Subscribe, turn on, turn on notifications, and we'll see you guys or uh, we'll hear you guys. And we'll see you guys next time. The views and opinions expressed in the QX Financial Podcast series do not necessarily represent the views or opinions of the How Natural Equity Sales Company or affiliated company. Before making any decisions concerning your personal or business financial situation or decisions concerning the information contained herein, you should consult a competent licensed professional. No offer, solicitation, or specific investment advice expressed or implied is being provided, and this podcast series and the information contained herein should not be regarded as such. Securities offered through the Owen Equity Sales Company member FINRA SIPC, one financial waste in Ohio, 45242, phone number 513-794-6794, Benjamin Morgan offers investment advisory services through all investment management company on the